Well, hello everyone. Welcome to our webcast today, where I'm excited to give you a first look at Thurgood's automated insights tool for manufacturers. My name is Eddie Druce. I'm a principal consultant here at Thurgood. I'm really pleased to be able to take you through the session today, which I'm sure if you're looking to get more understanding from your data, you will find really useful. If you want to get in touch, my contact details are on the screen and will be shared again at the end. So for today's agenda, I'll first give a brief introduction to Thurgood and what we do. I'll then provide some background to the Thurgood Automated Insights tool, why there is a need for it and what it can do for you. I'll give a short demo showcasing the outputs from the tool so you can see what it looks like in reality. And then finally, I'll talk a bit about what a typical implementation would look like and what would be involved if you were interested in talking to us further. First, a quick summary of who Thurgood are in case you're not aware. We're a specialist business intelligence and analytics firm focused on customer needs, including overall strategy, solution delivery and services. I'm based in the UK, but we also have offices in the US, in Singapore, in Brazil and India. We focus on the combination of analytic ability, business focus and technology and deliver a range of solutions for our clients. We're also a Microsoft Gold Partner accredited at the highest level in cloud, data platform, and analytic solutions. From a manufacturing and consumer goods perspective, we worked extensively with some of the world's leading manufacturing companies over many years, as you can see from the depth and breadth of delivered solutions represented here, supporting business processes across all typical business functions. It really is that experience and understanding which has helped hone and refine our skills and shape the solution we're talking about today. So let's start with a problem. Manufacturing organizations often possess a variety of data sources, including internal and data from external providers to get a better understanding of the performance of their products, to understand their market share and how that might be changing over time, and to get a sense of the buying behavior of the end consumer. The way this is typically analyzed is through the creation of informative inner interactive dashboards created in something like Power BI. A well-built dashboard can help users to see and understand some of the issues that influence their business, such as a marked sales growth in a product segment or out of the ordinary performance in certain categories or regions. Actions within the dashboard, such as filtering and drilling down to lower levels of detail, help the user hone into a particular aspect or interesting data anomaly that will help them understand what is going on. However, there is a problem. Organizations which operate at large scale, where there are a myriad of channels, brands, and categories, rely heavily on managers and analysts to manually identify the opportunities in the data. This kind of data exploration is a labor-intensive task which can be very time consuming and one that is simply too big of a challenge to carry out continually without the help of artificial intelligence. Some of the problems that stem from a traditional approach to business intelligence and analytics are the sheer number of data points that may hold some insight or value. The amount of time available for a busy user to actually investigate trends in their data. The likelihood that time spent looking at an issue will actually return some key insight without potentially wasting time ending up at a dead end. If the user finds something that looks interesting, how do they actually know if what they are seeing is a pattern in the data or a trend that is significant? And what other factors in the data could be causing it? And finally, if we're simply relying on investigation by human hand, what could we be missing that we hadn't had the time or simply the capacity to spot? What we want to do is empower users to get to insights quickly on the performance of their brands, segments and channels without them having to manually drill down into reports to perform their own analysis. We want to provide to managers those insights directly and for them to be used as an advanced starting point for their own investigations using their own contextual business environmental understanding that resides outside of the data. We want to provide a level of sophistication and intelligence that provides answers and insights in an easily consumable way. And finally, we want to ensure that they have the confidence in the significance of results and trends found so their time is focused in the right areas. This is where the Thorogood Automated Insights tools come in. What this tool provides is a set of built-in algorithms which will give you rapid answers to some of the key questions in your data, such as what are my top performers across my segments? What should I be concerned about that isn't performing well? And what are the opportunities for growth? It provides the insights in an easy to consume way and draws the user's attention directly to those trends and factors which are most significant. Through the creation of smart dashboards, which are included, but can also be configured for your own scenario, the tool provides a convenient and visual way to show users what insights the engine has uncovered that may have previously been missed by pure human investigation, directing users to the findings which have the most significance and providing them with that starting point for their own analysis, crucially ensuring that their time is spent in the right areas. By utilizing the Microsoft Azure Cloud, the solution can be deployed quickly and easily into your own data environment. 
If your data isn't on Azure, then that isn't a problem. We can connect the tool up to wherever your data resides and import it into our hosted Azure environment. Or alternatively, we can help you work towards building a modern data platform to support your analysis. And finally, because the whole process uses advanced analytic models, it can be run frequently and provide new insights as data is refreshed. For example, analysis that may have been done on a quarterly or monthly basis can be run daily, identifying issues and trends much earlier than previously possible, ensuring you maintain competitive advantage. The application has been developed using the Microsoft Azure platform. Now, if you're already using Microsoft Azure, then this could be deployed to your own Azure tenant. Or alternatively, the application can be hosted by us freeing you up from the burden of any infrastructure setup. The application uses a modern data architecture approach of first landing data into a data lake, utilizing Microsoft Azure Data Lake Store. The source information is ingested into the Azure Data Lake, preferably in its rawest form, where some partial processing may be carried out to perform data transformations and alignment across the disparate sets of information. The next part is really the power of the application, the Databricks service. This service runs the advanced analytics algorithms over the data in super quick time to generate the insights. We'll talk about what these algorithms are doing shortly. But Databricks is a very powerful technology which provides sophisticated analytical capability and is highly parallelized, which means it is able to run the analysis on large volumes of data very quickly and efficiently. The output from the Databricks process is then stored in an Azure SQL Server database, or if data volumes are very large, an Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Data from SQL is then loaded and visualized using Power BI for end users to review the outputs. As the data is run through the Databricks process, there are a number of things it is doing. First, it runs clustering algorithms to generate new features from the data for use throughout the model, along with additional context that can be used to help highlight or describe particular behaviors in the data. Second, it decomposes the KPIs for every single combination of attributes at every level to identify the underlying trends for each across different time buckets. This is then used to understand what interesting insights lie in the data. It uses advanced techniques to uncover what are the real drivers of performance to ensure you are not distracted by performance indicators, which are in fact a result of deeper lying insight. Fourth, it detects the driver that could help to explain what is causing it. For example, it looks to see what might explain a growth in volume sold, such as a price increase in a competitor or promotional activity. Fifth, it uses advanced forecasting techniques to identify any outliers in the data in recent months that could point to a particular emerging trend or highlight something unusual requiring greater attention. And it again, detects the drivers that could help to identify the cause. And finally, it textually classifies the results of all the data processing for ease of consumption by the end user. So let's head over to a pre-built Power BI workbook for you to visualize the results of the algorithm. So here we are on the splash screen for our fictional Thorogood AIM company. Before I go through it, let me just describe the data we are looking at here. This is market data for the deodorants category, which as you can see from the graphs is highly seasonal. Seasonality causes an issue in the first place when trying to identify trends. When we use more traditional calculated metrics, it is hard to understand whether the behavior we are seeing is caused by the seasonality or whether there's something else going on. For example, you might try to cope with the seasonality by using a moving annual total, which will have the effect of smoothing trends or by using comparison measures to compare to previous time periods, which can have challenges depending on the period and whether you are comparing against previous seasonal peaks. Overall, it can be hard to glean the information from the noise. We can see here clearly the seasonality and the underlying trend of the overall category. This data happens to be seasonal, but it doesn't have to be. At the bottom is a chart showing the top five manufacturers by volume share over a period of time. And to the right, some details of the insights from the outlier detection algorithm and blank space identification. The outlier detection algorithm, which uses advanced forecasting techniques, is used to identify large variations in the current month from the predicted value that could point to emerging trends. The blank space detection highlights growing segments where either you don't have an offering in that particular segment or where you have an offering but it is missing in a particular channel or region. Just to note, a number of features have been introduced into the model using clustering techniques that might help better understand the performance drivers. For example, pack price structures. These are used throughout the model. We have a number of pre-built dashboards to get to the key insights from various different business perspectives. But first, let's go over and see the outliers. So at the top here, we have filter options with the options filtered to where we have outlying behavior. At the bottom is a graph to highlight the behavior of the selected item. And to the right, details of the likely cause of 
the particular variance, i.e. where a driver change or a set of driver changes show a particular correlation to the behavior demonstrated. We currently have the Flavor of India product selected, which as we can see has a large upward trend in the current month, which is a seasonally low month, which appears to be due to an increased level of distribution in that sales area. Now let's take a look at another outlier. Again, we can see the factors that appear to have contributed to that change, looking like it is a combination of different factors in this case, an increase in standard price and a decrease in distribution. So we can use this to see where particular behaviors of products might point to something significant happening or emerging trends that might require further investigation. Now let's go back to the splash screen and look at the blank spaces that have been identified. At the top here, we have some additional information on the blank spaces. We can see that the blank spaces where the thoroughgood aim has no product offering in particular segments make up around 9.1% of the market. And where there is a product, but it is not present in a particular channel or region combination, where equivalent products are demonstrating growth, makes up around 4%. The bottom section is currently filtered to the segments where there is no product offering in our portfolio, ordered by the market size. We also get an indication of the growth score alongside that. Taking the top item, it's currently telling us that we don't have a product in the mid-sized value male aerosol deer category which is around 3.9% of the current market and demonstrating a reasonable level of growth. We can see the behavior of that particular segment to the right-hand side. Remember, this is seasonal data with data only up to February 2019, which is why in this case, it may look like the product is declining. If we select another product, in this case, the pump squeeze spray, large pack mid-range, where we have a growth score of 14.1. This looks like an interesting product space. It's reasonably new and is growing at a pace with the 2019 sales level far exceeding the same point last year. Going back to the top, if we change our focus to look at the areas where we have a product offering, but one which is not present in a particular area or region. Again, we see the details of the missing products set alongside the share of the channel or region, the growth rating, and a suggestion of the particular product in our portfolio that could be a potential to address that white space. Clicking on the first one here, we can see the potential of that product segment. We can use this information alongside our current product mix profile to understand whether it might make sense to delist and introduce a different variant. Now let's have a look at the insights on the other dashboards. Jumping over to the market overview dashboard, at the top I can see the share leaders within the particular segments, brand, channel, region and the pack price segment. Below that I can see the top growing items by those same segments. I should explain that the growth score is a value derived from the 3, 6, 12 month and all history trend values generated across all dimensional levels that gives the normalized growth rating used in all the insights. If I click on any of these members, I can see the key insights in the table below for each member. For example, if I click on the Teal Superstore, which is the top channel by share. In the table, you can see the green arrows. This indicates an upwards growth. A red arrow indicates a downwards growth. And the two arrows, one being red, shows an underperformance against the whole segment. These are the top insights for that particular channel. As you can see, the insights can be at any level of granularity, depending on what is really driving the behavior of the channel. To the right of the icon, you can see information on the most significant product within that selected segment. We can see that the Teal Superstore, Aero, Sol, Mayar midsize is declining. So let's take a closer look at what's driving this decline. Again, at the top, we can see the overall trend for that segment. At the bottom are the details of the most significant insights ordered by weighting. If you notice in the table where the insight relates to one of our products, we get information about the top competitor within the segment alongside it to help us understand how our competitors are performing and their characteristics. So we can see that the top item is our own pale product, which if I click on it, shows me the decline in sales over time. If I click on the next product in the list, we can see that the Regis Tilba value product has a high market share and is growing. Scrolling a little further down, I can also see cooked value product is growing at a reasonable rate. So it appears there's something with the value products in that channel. Let's go back to the market dashboard and let's look at one of the top trending items, for example, the Radiance brand, which is one of our products. Again, you can see on the key insights table, as you would expect for a trending item, they are mostly green. The additional information section shows you the information on the most relevant competitor. And again, we can click through to the details so we can address and understand any of the significance. We'll now move over to the channel dashboard. Here we have a similar kind of setup to the previous but for particular channels. This is aimed at channel managers who need to understand what is happening within their channel. If we take a look at the independent chemists, for example, underneath the channel filter, we get a synopsis of the channel performance. We can see the top brand, variant, and pack size segment 
along with the trending items along the top. If we click on the mid-size value under our top variance, as before, you can see the underlying details and we can, get, we can click through to detail. We also have a regional dashboard, which is the same as the channel, but with a regional perspective. So brand gives us a different kind of perspective, and this is the kind of perspective your brand manager would be interested in. The dashboard is a little different. We have our brands on the top left, and I'll select our Radiance brand. Alongside it, there's a bit of detail on the performance of the selected brand, the market share, and its overall growth score. Below, we can see the key threats. These are the areas of top concern with respect to the brand, where it is showing the poorest performance and a need for greater interrogation. It highlights the top competitors in the same segment with a performance summary for that product and its characteristics. At the moment, this is configured to look at the most competitive product within the segment, but it can be configured to show the top performing product to highlight the characteristics of the top performers in relation to our own performance. On the right, we can see the bright spots. These are where the product is growing at its most significant rate, and at the bottom, the outliers, if any. If I hover over the outliers, I can get a quick view of each, so I can see if there is anything of significance that might require further investigation. Of course, I can again drill into the detail of each of these bright spots to get some more contextual information. And that concludes the demo. Super quick and super simple. That's the idea. In minutes, we were able to see the most relevant insights to us without having to explore vast amounts of data and data permutations. We were given an advanced starting point of bringing out the key highlights and potentially hidden information for us to then apply our own contextual and business understanding to move quickly to action. As mentioned, these are pre-built suite of dashboards to visualize the insights generated by the Analytics engine. These can be customized to suit the needs of you and your business to display the information you need in the way you need it. We'll head back to the slides now and talk about what the process would look like for you in terms of the engagement and implementation. So what does the typical implementation of the automated insights tool look like in your organization? The first step is to connect up to the data sources that we'll be using to drive the application. We then import that data into the data lake store in its rawest form, so it is available for the automated insights application. Third, we apply some data modeling concepts to get the data into the right shape for the analytical engine to run. Next, we configure and tweak the engine and apply any particular bespoke business logic you would require. An initial set of results are then generated by the engine, which we'll then review with you, refine and then tune if necessary. And finally, we refine the process and add in a level of automation as appropriate so the process can run on an ongoing basis. So what would a typical engagement look like? Well, we generally try and take an agile approach, scoping out short phases of work which focus on delivering business value each time. That means the overall process for delivery may be broken down into chunks that would run over multiple sprints. In order to set the scene, the first step on the journey is an initial scoping workshop to understand your core requirements, such as the data sources available, the current state of those sources, for example, are they modeled and mapped, the key business indicators, the performance drivers, the insights that are of the highest value to you and potential information clusters. We'd also carry out a short data exploration study to identify the sources that are most relevant to your business, some of which could be internal, but also considering external data sources such as Nielsen and Kantar. Once scoping is done, we then move into the build and configure phase. This phase is where we install the application insights tool into your environment and hook it up to your data. There may be some prep work to do at this stage in getting your data into a central location, or it may be able to just plug in. We also at this stage configure the application insights engine to meet your requirements as well as configure the database and report templates. Once all that is in place, the last phase is to review, refine, and support the ongoing process. If tweaks need to be made to the engine to refine the inputs or algorithms, or maybe tweaks to the reporting outputs for better alignment. You might also want to think about further expansion and scope to extend the tool's reach within your organization to further maximize the potential. That brings us to the end of our session today. I hope you found it useful. If that has excited you with the possibilities of what the Automated Insights tool can do, and you want to find out more, then do let us know. You can contact me directly, and my details are on the screen. Alternatively, you can send an email to aim at thorogood.com, and someone from the team will respond. You can also visit our website, where further details will be available. Check out thorogood.com slash aim for more. We'll be very interested to talk to you about your interest in the tool and what you've seen. So if you have any thoughts, feedback, or product features, you'll be interested to see, then please do get in touch. We'd also be more than happy to come and do a live demo and discuss the possibilities with you if that is of interest. Many thanks for your time today.